Christina YouTube channel. I'm Christina. I am crafty and this is a channel where I share all about my knitting and crafting adventures. Welcome back everybody. Today I have a very extra special video for you. It is not a podcast and it is definitely not a vlog. It is, you've guessed it by the thumbnail and the title, a six month check-in for my 2023 knitting plans. That's right you guys. Somehow, we're over six months through the year. Today's July 7th when I'm recording this, so we're well overdue <laughs> for a six-month check-in on how I'm doing. So, earlier this year, I posted a video, my 2023 knitting plans, what I'm going to make, finish, or frog from my stash. Yes, that's right. I'm using only my stash for a number of reasons, and today we're going to check in on the progress that I have made so far. Am I trending ahead? Am I tracking behind? Am I right on track? What's going on with your stash? I've got the answers to all these questions. So grab your knitting, grab yourself something to drink, your crafts, whatever you need. Get cozy and let's get into it. Okay, you guys, I have <laughs> an unbelievably long list to follow and I have a mountain of projects over on the side. So we're going to do a couple of different things today, but to start, I thought we would do a little bit of a recap. So if you watch my video, if you haven't, I've linked it up here. I will link it down below as well if you want to take a pause and go watch that first or watch it after this. But I've created a little graphic. I'm going to pop on the screen here of a high level overview of the things that I said I wanted to make, finish, and frog in 2023. Out of those 14 patterns, with the exception of the dishcloths, that brings us to a total of 25 projects. Now that we have gone through the recap, it's time for a project parade. I've got a bunch of projects to show you for a little bit of a show and tell, and we're going to start right at the top with some finished objects. So to begin, I am going to be sharing with you my Broadway socks. So, so far this year, I have knit technically five pairs of socks. The first pair in January. This is for my Trilogy Yarns monthly Broadway club. My January pair was knit in the colorway A Christmas Story. My February pair was knit in the colorway Miss Saigon. My March pair was knit out of the colorway Wicked. My April pair was knit out of the colorway Hairspray. Probably my favorite pair of socks to date, if I'm being completely honest. They're so bright and fun. And finally, I'm going to call this one finished pair, although they are technically two half objects. My half of a May pair and half of a June pair are with contrast heels and toes. The purple sock, it was made in the colorway The Prom, and the pink sock was made in the colorway Grease. And those are my Broadway socks so far. I do have the mates cast on for both the pink sock and the purple sock there, which I'm hoping to finish as soon as possible. But it's been kind of hot and I've been a little busy, so I'm still tracking a little behind on my socks, but I'm confident I can get ahead. The next finished objects I wanted to share with you were some of the dishcloths that I have knit this year. I have a pretty big stash of cotton yarn. I'm saying pretty big. It's like big for me. 
I guess. <laughs> Maybe not big for someone else. And I wanted to knit through those skeins. So one, they're out of my stash. And two, I have some gifts. So, so far this year, I have knit five dishcloths and have used two and a half balls of yarn. I have a little bit of scraps left over from these, which I'm going to keep in this giant bucket to use once all of my full skeins are gone. But I'm loving the way that these look so far. They're going to be really, really great for gift knitting and Christmas gifts. The next finished object I have to share is my Trunk Island Tank by Beth McDonald Stone. And I have a million and one things I could say about this. But I'm going to save my breath this time, other than telling you how much I am obsessed with it. I love it. It fits great. The only thing I would have done is knit it a little bit longer. And I ended up needing to buy a second skein of yarn in this colorway to finish it. If you want to know more about that process, I did talk about it on my last podcast episode right at the beginning for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and I do a try on in another video. But really love this tank and I'm so glad I made it. I will definitely re-knit it. And my soon-to-be mother-in-law, for many of you who have noticed, I was wearing a ring in my last video. I got engaged. <laughs> um, which might be a surprise to you. A lot of people thought I was already married. I'm not. I'm not married yet. But I'm engaged now. <laughs> uh, but my 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 lady-in-law, my, my soon-to-be mother-in-law, um, asked me if I would actually knit one of these tanks for her for Christmas and I told her she could request it but I told her I didn't know if it would come this year so I think I'll probably knit one of these in the future again for myself but I will also knit one for her she's pretty knit worthy one of the most knit worthy people I know okay moving on let me take a look at my list oh I forgot on the list that I made one of my finished objects well I've got two finished objects left and one of them a half object so I'm going to start by sharing with you I finished the Musselberg hat it's my Musselberg by Zolda Teague I knit the size medium I can't remember what needle size but all the details are updated on my project page so make sure you're over there um I've been trying to keep all of the details in there and updated as as much as possible, but um, this colorway is Brainstorm. It is by Mountain State Stitches. And I'll do a little try on for you here, even though my hair is a little wet. <laughs> I just love this hat. I finished it just in time for like the last bit of cold that we got here in Western Pennsylvania. Um, and I just really love it. And Believe it or not, I'm really looking forward to winter this year. Maybe looking forward is not the right phrase, but I'm I'm dreading it a little less because I've been working this year to knit myself some warm things to wear in those colder months like this hat and all of my socks so far for myself. And I also have fingerless mitts planned for this year, which is a hint hint that I have not started or finished them yet. And the final finished object that I have to share is a half object, and that is just a plain vanilla sock for my friend Melanie. She sent me a couple of skeins a little over a year and a half ago now and said, when you get to it, pick one of these skeins of yarn from Sweet George Yarns and knit me some socks. So I've knit one and I need to knit its mate, but it's half finished, the yarn's great, and I'd like to finish this so I can gift them to her for Christmas. And hopefully they fit and then I'll know how to knit her more socks in the future. That's about it for finished projects, but I do have three more projects to show you that are works in progress. And the first one I'm going to show to you is going to check two boxes off of my to make finisher frog list. And that is my scattering petals cow. This is a pattern by Dana Ray Makes. And the yarn that I'm using for this, I had to frog my Annalise wrap for. So I did frog that wrap. I think I did this back in April. And I love the yarn. I've shown these colors before. 
and I've got them here in this little basket. Um, it's really beautiful. I am knitting the fingering weight version of this pattern. And I'm knitting the long cowl. So I think when I'm finished, I'll be able to wrap around twice. And it matches my coat. So this will be another thing that keeps me warm this year in the cold months. It'll be super cute. Something I wanted to finish this year, and I'm going to be completely honest when I talk about this. I've been a little unmotivated, so if you watched my last video, well, my 2023 knitting plans video, you're going to notice that I did not get very far, but that is my Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart. Here is what it's looking like. I am, to be completely honest, now that I'm looking at it again, really loving this project, but I'm not nearly as far as I wanted to be. I had hoped that I would finish this blanket in the first half of the year, but that's not really how my life has gone. So I'm okay with that. I said in my video at the beginning of the year that I was going to be flexible myself. If there was a new pattern that I really wanted to make instead of something that I had planned, I would do it. And I feel for the most part, I've been pretty flexible with myself, but I think I'm really still loving these plans I've made. So I haven't strayed away very much. I've just gotten behind on some things. So that is about it for the projects that I had planned this year, but I do have one honorable mention, which was... I think an idea that I had in that video, but I wasn't set in stone about it. It was something that I decided on later. And I don't quite know if I'm going to qualify this as something that I make finisher frog in 2023, because this is going to be a very long term project. And the project is the jigsaw puzzle blanket by Stephen West. This is a DK weight blanket, knit modularly one shape at a time. And I have been oh so obsessed with using the leftovers from my Broadway socks for this project. So I am only on four shapes and of the pattern, it's a little hard to hold up here. <laughs> but um, this is shape four. And just cruising along, I've been, whoops, <laughs> I lost my yarn. I've been, knitting, I've been knitting my socks two at a time on circular needles. And so I've been winding the capes up into two like 50-ish gram balls. So I'm already ready to hold these double for my shapes when they're finished. I've been obsessed with this project, but it has 47 or 48 modular shapes. And um, I don't have that much Broadway yarn yet. So I'm hoping she continues this. At the end of this year, I'll have 24 skeins. So I'm just hoping, I, I guess, that she'll be doing this for another two years. <laughs> so this blanket will likely be done in like five years from now, but it seems like a long time. I'll be married and probably having kids by then. Holy cow. Anyway, I've been really jazzed about it. It's been super fun. Um, I truly this year have realized that I just can't knit fast enough, but that is it. That is it for my project so far. Ones that are on the needles, ones that have been started and are lingering, ones that have been finished or are half finished. That's my little project parade for you. Before we get into some math, I did want to share a stash update. So if you've been a longtime Crafty Christina viewer, or if you watch my podcast, or if you tune in every now and then, you'll know that I've been giving, in almost every podcast that I do, I don't know, like a stash update in out tracker for each month when the month is concluded. And so I've been doing that along the way, but I thought it would be really fun to kind of give you a closer look at what that has actually meant over the last six months. At the beginning of 2023, I started with 114 skeins of yarn in my stash. This was a rough number. This is not an exact number. I have a feeling I just, I have found skeins this year in places I didn't know they were, okay? And I'm not worrying about it. I'm just going to follow through with this plan for now. And then when I feel like I need to revisit, I will. It's not life or death. 
but my rough number is that I started with 114 skeins. In January, I brought in one skein of yarn. But in January, I used four skeins of yarn. In February, I brought in one skein. I used two skeins. In March, I brought in two skeins because I found a skein of yarn in my car, <laughs> in addition to my monthly Broadway Cloud. And I only used one skein of yarn in March. In April, I brought in seven skeins. One was my monthly club, but six were from frogging my Annalise wrap. So also in April, I used a monthly yarn club and I cast on the Scattering Petals Cal, which brought me to a total of seven used skeins. So I broke even in April. In May, I brought in two skeins of yarn and used three skeins of yarn. And in June, I broke even again, bringing in one skein of yarn and using one skein of yarn, which in total brings 14 skeins brought into my stash this year and 18 skeins used for my stash this year. So you'll see, I have used more <laughs> than I have brought in, but technically bringing in the yarn um, majority of that yarn was only my Broadway clubs. The exceptions were a missing Broadway club that was in my car. And I had to buy an extra skein of yarn to finish my Trunk Island tank, which I did not plan. The rest of it was my regular planned monthly Broadway club, which I'm completely fine with for purchases. It's the only yarn I'm buying right now. And all of the other yarn I used for my stash. If I brought it in, I immediately used it. So I'm feeling pretty good. So at the top of July, I am at 110 skeins in my stash. So I know you're thinking, Christina, now what? We've looked at what your projects were for the year. We've looked at your project parade for what you've worked on or what you're currently working on. And we've looked at your stash and your in and out tracker and how much you've used so far versus how much you've brought in this year. What now? Well, now we're going to look at a couple of charts that I made so we can do some math the moment we've all been waiting for. Out of all the things, with the exception of my dishcloths that I plan to make in 2023, 25 patterns, I have made 42% progress on my goals for the year. And I know you're wondering, how did you get that number? So taking a look at this chart, I've put a green check mark next to projects that I have completed. And I've put red check marks next to the projects that are in progress. And essentially, I added all of the green up as whole completed projects. I added all of the red check marks up as half completed objects, so 50%, if you will, um, which led me to approximately 10.5 finished objects. So I divided that by 25 and I got 42%. 42%. 42%. I'm a little behind and I'm okay with it. I had a feeling I was going to get to this place because life is truly seasonal and sometimes I knit more than others. And in the summer, I've been knitting a lot less because it's been hot. And in the spring, I knit a little less than I had planned because I had a couple of work events that had me working a little more overtime than I expected, which is totally fine. I know that's how my life works. Um, and that's another reason that I decided to be ambitious, but really flexible and set myself up with a path of things that I really wanted to knit so I could feel productive, but also creative and enjoy that time. All while saving money to buy a house and now get married. <laughs> so let's talk about course correction. What are my plans for the rest of the year? Well, let's look at another chart. Here is what I have left to course correct. So out of 25 projects, I have 17 projects left to complete, and I left those red check marks on there. The red check marks are projects that I have currently in progress. So, of these 17, I am 29% in progress for my goals. And be honest, after looking at this chart though, I was feeling a little perplexed, and I decided to make a list in the only way that I know how. Um, I made lists of my lists of my lists. So, here's a list of what I have left. And now we're going to look at some lists of the months that I have left in the year, when I'm going to work on things and in a perfect world. And if life cooperates and my knitting mojo returns after this hot, hot week we have had here in Western Pennsylvania, here's how I'm going to finish 
all of these projects in 2023. So in June, I have a couple of things I know that I can do that will be easy for me to push myself a little over that 50% line, I think. And that is going to be to finish the two socks that I have on my needles, technically completing a June pair of socks. I'm going to start and finish my July pair of Broadway socks, plain vanilla, no bells and whistles, just regular schmegular socks. I'm going to frog my pebble tunic, which I'm going to be honest, I've been putting off because I know it's going to be like six skeins I add to my stash. I wasn't ready for that number to increase in that way. And finally, I'm going to cast on the Desperate Housewife cardigan. This project, you guys, I have been dying to cast on for over a year. A year ago, I swatched for the project and I picked up my yarns and I've been staring at it. I use my swatch as a coaster sometimes <laughs> and I am really excited about it. I actually have the swatch here. I'll show you. It is so cute. I'm so excited about it. And I think it will really allow me to give myself a kick in the pants for my, my knitting motivation. I found a newfound love with my Trunk Island tank and garment knitting. So I think I'm really ready to tackle this project. Plus the stripes and the consistently changing colors with the interest of knitting a different type of garment, picking out buttons. Like, I think it's just really going to gauge my interest in a way that vanilla knitting just doesn't and can become a little monotonous for me at times. I think it's exactly what I'm going to need. So assuming I do all of that in July, in August, I want to start and finish my August Broadway socks, finish my scattering petals cowl, and continue to work the body of my cardigan. The next few months are going to look a little scarce. I will talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But in September and October, I'm planning to only start and finish my monthly Broadway socks. In November, I want to start and finish my November Broadway socks and finish my habitation throw. And I know you're like, hmm, Christina, where, where are you working on that? I'll tell you in a sec. And then finally, in December, I want to start and finish my December Broadway socks, as well as knit my anthology throw with my advent color from last year. I think that will be a really fun way to add some new stuff into my vlogmas without having to worry about what am I going to make with my advent calendar that I have planned for this year. I know it's a fade. I'm really excited about it, but I would like to see the whole thing, I think, before I cast on a project. So now that I've seen my beautiful faded advent calendar from last year, I know I want to make it an anthology throw. So those will be on my winter knitting plans, kind of relaxing, super easy. I can do something every day and it'll be fun to show my progress all December long. Now that you've seen my month by month plans, let's talk about the extra times I have to knit. Christina, how are you going to finish everything else? Well, the rest of my knitting time usually comes in three opportunities. The first is Pomodoro knitting. So if you're new or if you are returning, I like to use something called the Pomodoro focus timer when I am working from home in my eight hour days where I set a timer for 30 minutes. I work for 30 minutes. Then when the timer goes off, I take a five minute break. And if I don't need something like going to the bathroom or a snack or a drink, then I knit for five minutes on usually a sock. Basically, Pomodoro knitting is only during my Monday through Friday, nine to five non knitting job. So with that being said, I thought that it would be really easy for me to add some things into my Pomodoro knitting. It'll be easy for me to do doesn't take a lot of thought and should overall get done pretty quickly and steadily for the rest of the year. And those three things are knitting the second sock for my friend Melanie, knitting through my dishcloths, and knitting my fingerless mitts in Patty's Perfect Mitts pattern. The second place that I knit on the regular is at my local yarn store or at local knitting groups. And 
For that, I am going to focus on knitting my habitation throw while I am there. The only time I will not knit on my habitation throw while I am there is if I am behind on my monthly knitting plans. And if that's the case, then I will focus on those until they are completed. Then I'll get back to my throw. And finally, I knit while I watch TV. <laughs> This could also be counted as car knitting or visiting knitting, but for the most part, I knit while I watch TV. So my plans for while I watch TV are to just alternate between my monthly projects and my habitation throw until they are finished. So if I'm watching New Girl, my favorite TV show, all afternoon long, I watch eight episodes. Every episode, I'm going to work on a different project. So I might start on episode one with a sock. When I get to episode two, I'll go to my habitation throw. When I get to episode three, I might go back to my sock or I might pick up my scattering petals cow. Then I'll go back to my throw, then I'll go to my card again, and so on and so forth. And I will continue to do this every time I watch TV. Changes things up, all my projects are getting some love, um, catching my interest and enjoying my time while I relax and watch some shows by myself or with my fiance. <laughs> so now that you've seen all of my set in stone plans. We've looked at the month by month and we've looked at the other times that I'm knitting. If I'm working, if I'm watching TV, or if I'm at a knit group, I have different projects assigned to those out of the home or regular tasks that, or things that I do in my free time. Going back to my monthly goals, I know that I have big events in September, October, and kind of November, so I wanted to keep those months light and flexible for myself because I don't know what's going to happen. I might get ahead and finish a bunch of stuff and then have the ability to stop working on my dishcloths, and I might, you know, finish my socks for Melanie really quickly, and I might finish the dishcloths really quickly, and if my mitts are done during my Pomodoro knitting, then I'm going to have another opportunity to work on something else, so I might start another pair of Broadway socks. I might throw my habitation throw knitting into that. I'm going to give myself that flexibility to decide, and after all of these plans, that leaves me with two projects left that are my if I have time projects and that is the camellia sweater using the repurposed yarn for my frogged pebble tunic and the rue shawl which was kind of an honorable mention project earlier in the year but I have a couple skeins I really want to use for this shawl so I'm going to keep it on the back burner in case I get really excited or have the time to knit both of those things. There you have it you guys my six month 2023 knitting goals check-in video. Leave me a comment let me know what you think. Can she do it? Can she do it? It's the question I'm asking myself. Can I do it? Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you again in the next one in just two weeks. Okay. Bye guys.